y'all and welcome back or if you're new around here hello and welcome my name is Katie and I like to sit down and chit chat with you guys about random topics while doing my makeup with a typically new palette and today I'm excited to try the DD Signatures the classic autumn palette and I'm so excited that DD Signatures did come back if you are new to DD Signatures uh, I think that she closed down in or shut down her brand in was it 2020 Oh gosh, I think, it, no, no, I think it was uh, 2021, I think. It was right before I got pregnant, or right when I got pregnant with my daughter. She shut down shortly after that. Anyway, it's been a little while, but she announced a couple months ago that she is gonna be coming back, and this is her first new palette that she has brought or released since coming back. She also brought back her neutrals palette, which I have done a video on. I will leave that link down below if you wanna check that out, but that was the first kind of bringing it back, opening up her brand again. She brought that pal palette back. But this is a new palette, the Classic Autumn Palette. Look at this beautiful, beautiful palette. I have used this many times. I can't remember how many, at least four times before this so I can give you guys a pretty well-rounded review as we play with it but oh my goodness I love these tones you guys know I love the autumn tones and these are so very pretty so I'm excited to dive in on the uh, on this palette um, and also excuse my nails I am working in the garden I was planting a bunch of strawberry starts today so my nails are rough I didn't have time to clean them you guys hear that almost every video now, but I do want to try this out. So let's go ahead, or not try this out. I do want to review it for you guys. Let's go ahead and prime my eyes. And I figured I can give you guys my review on this and also share with you guys what I'm doing in the garden. Because in a previous video when I mentioned it, I had a couple of people say that you'd like to hear more about gardening here in Northwest Florida and or you know gardening in my zone. And then also I had a couple questions on like what am I growing um, for the winter? So. That's what we're gonna talk about. So let's dive in. I just put a little bit of the P. Louise, let me flip this around. P. Louise um, primer, eyeshadow base, whatever, on my eyes. I'm gonna blend it out. If you are new here, I don't think I, already, I said it already, but I do not edit my videos currently. So I try not to let there be any pauses, but any kind of mess ups are gonna be left in the video and um, no fun, no fun edits, no fun zooms but we get to play with makeup and chit chat so if you enjoy that kind of video this is the video for you uh yeah like as i said before we dive into talking about the garden i'm really excited that dd signatures is back she um especially i think her fruit theme palettes were probably my favorite because they were so unique and interesting when it came to the color story so she i love what she does with color stories the color combinations that she brings together she's as a brand very creative so i'm excited to see what she comes out with but DD Signatures, um, we're gonna dive into this one. It's a fall theme palette, so not super crazy unique, but still has some color in there that I feel like is just fun, different, pops to something else. Um, let's go ahead and play on the purple and pink side, because that's definitely the one I haven't played with too much. Sorry, uh, I'm drinking coffee again. I'm gonna burp a little bit, my apologies. Um, I'm gonna go with, um, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to say eggplant, but instead of an L, there's an I there. So a little typo there, but eggplant, I believe. Oh my goodness, my camera is blinking. I hope I can make it through this because my other one actually, I thought I had plugged this in. Hang on one second. I would typically, whoops, I would typically cut this out or like edit this out, but uh, maybe if Katie remembers, she will. But let me plug this in real quick. That way this other one can be charging because I only have two. Um, charger or two different batteries when it comes to my camera so if that one's dead and this one's flashing I'm in trouble today but anyway with that said let's go ahead we're gonna go in with eggplant let me refocus my camera just to make sure nothing crazy is happening oh yeah I have a purple shirt on even more reason to go purple more purple pinky so I'm gonna dive into uh, eggplant first I'm probably gonna take a little bit of that black because you guys know I love to deepen it up as much as I can with a dark black I like my outer corner to be nice and dark but we're gonna start with purple so I'm gonna pack this on. Let's see how deep this shade can go. Now this is more of a, um, not a stiff or firm type of outer corner packing. It's very fluffy, so it doesn't, I feel like it's not gonna pack as well. So I am gonna switch it up and grab more of a packer brush that I tend to like. Oh, this one's a good one on my outer corner. So let's change that up. I just don't like how soft it felt. It's great for blending with that type of softness, but not so much for packing. Yeah, see, I feel like that's a big difference already. Anyway, 
we're gonna put this on um, yeah I am gardening trying to fill uh, all my beds as much as I can I want to have all of the the beds the areas that I have for gardening filled up this fall or this fall slash winter whatever you want to call it in November um, for this year it's definitely been a goal of mine to fill it up and use it because um, I have how many is it nine eight no ten 10 different beds that I had prepped the year we moved in here and then we had a baby and we got a dog and I just threw all of them I threw my hands up in the air and said never mind not gardening but now that life is getting a little bit easier this fall leading into the winter I really wanted to get back into gardening and really just using the soil that I have prepared already to grow some things I mean even not even just for us but like with having pigs and chickens like we could be growing stuff in the dirt and even if it's not necessarily something we eat if we're able to grow it all I need to, do to attend to it is water and some fertilizer I'm growing food I can give it to the animals for foods for supplementing food so that was a big goal of mine so I am growing all the things as much as I can if you don't know I live in Florida, Northwest Florida, my zone, like for planting, if you're gardening, uh, this is me. I'm very much a wannabe gardener. Don't complain, don't claim to be an expert at all. I'm learning so much, but I am in zone 8B. So, um, that, if that helps you at all to know where my zone is, but because of where I live, I can do a lot of gardening and grow a lot of things in the winter that maybe people farther up north aren't able to because it's too, too cold, but also it's the like only time of year that I can grow things that other people do grow kind of like lettuce like we can't grow lettuce here from I remember trying in the spring definitely kill dies in the summer but it starts bolting too quick because Florida's too hot I got an itch on my back that won't go away Ugh. anyway um so the fall is the perfect time to plant for lettuce and if you can cover it up if you get really cold snaps you know if it gets too cold you can make it last but uh, anyway so I'm wanting to do that I have lettuce growing out there I have well let me think hang on sorry interrupt for a brief moment while I think about what I want to do. I'm going to take a little bit of, wow, can I hold it open? Beets. And I'm going to put that going inward, I guess. Let's just do that. Um, but yeah, so what have I got in the garden? I have lettuce. I have um, arugula. I have spinach. What else do I have? I have... It's a little bit too pink than what I want. I'm going to do pink in the inner half. I'm going to take more of that purple and blend over that because I kind of want to stick the outer edge very purpley. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. I need a smaller, or not smaller, but I need a more pinpointed uh, blending brush. So I'm going to go with this, just the tip. Onto beets, like I said, and put it right in here. Isn't it blending beautifully? Uh, that's something with Dee Dee Signature. She had a fantastic formula as well. Her formula for her mats wasn't always like the thickest, creamiest, but it was pigmented. So it's a little bit on the thinner side when you like feel it and touch it and work with it. Thinner as in like I can kind of see my skin through it if that helps at all. Like it's not super... When you, I don't know, it's just something about it. it just feels a bit thinner. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, not as like thick as like I'm thinking of Nomad Cosmetics or even... Um, menagerie it feels a little bit more dry when you touch it with your finger or when you're using it and blending it but it is so pigmented you really can't notice the uh, the thinness of the formula unless you really get up close and then be like okay I can kind of see I feel like I see my skin through it that type of thing but uh yeah it's so pigmented Ugh. and this palette is just as amazing when it comes to the formula of the her mats as I remember it back before she um, shut down or closed down her brand so I'm very thankful to see that there's no big change with the formula at all so anyway let's see what do I have in the garden I have lettuce arugula spinach I'm growing collards collard greens I'm growing kale I'm growing Brussels sprouts never drew, uh, grew that before I honestly never really ate it until I was an adult but I want to try to grow it I'm doing broccoli my kids love broccoli so I got lots of broccoli plants going on going uh growing up what else do i have um i'm gonna go back to that eggplant shade i don't have any eggplants <laughs> but uh what else do i have let's see broccoli kale i think i might have already said brussels sprouts collards um cabbage carrots um what else do i have i have celery onions garlic is in the ground uh whew. Carrots. I'm going to be planting a little bit more carrots here soon just to kind of have a lot of them coming up because they take a little while to grow. So I want to be able to kind of pick a, off of them and eat all year. And then as I pull them up, I'll probably plant some more until it gets too warm for them. What else do I have? I feel like there's more that I'm blanking on. 
yeah, broccoli. Oh, peas. That's the other big thing. I planted a bunch of peas, so I got some um, some trellises set up so they can start climbing because they're tall enough now that they can start grabbing on and climbing upwards. So I'm hopeful. This is my first time growing peas. I've grown beans before, but not peas successfully. I've tried a couple times, more in the spring and then in the uh, fall, and both times they died. Um, well, no, I didn't try in the fall. Take that back. I tried in the spring and the summer and both times they died. I think it was just a little too hot by the time they were getting going for them to survive. So I'm doing it in the fall and from what I heard, as long as I can get them going and be nice and strong before freezes that I should be okay. Um, so they're they're starting to climb. So I hope that means that I can get some be uh, some peas before it gets too cold or if it gets too cold. Florida's always hit or miss. Last year was the coldest winter or Christmas, winter, whatever I ever remember. We had like a week was it many days where it was down in the teens which is crazy for here like teens I should say not even at night you know because that's not abnormal but teens during the day <laughs> it was cold um, and it was right around Christmas too I think it was like Christmas Day Christmas Eve it was cold anyway so that's a little bit of a rarity I feel like most often we have pretty mild um, winters with you know just a couple days here and there getting super cold but then it kind of warms back up and of course at night um, you know getting pretty cold what is, oh, I'm growing some leeks. I got those started. I'm pretty sure I got those started a little late and I'm actually growing some onions from seed. I have some starts that are gonna be delivered in a couple weeks, uh, but I wanted to try growing them from seed as well, which I'm pretty sure I should have started a lot earlier, but I was like, hey, I have them. I'm just gonna try a couple. So those just sprouted and started growing. I'm trying to grow, gosh darn, um, uh, what do you call it? cilantro because my husband loves cilantro I do not um, but in Florida you really the only time are where I live um, you can't grow them in the summer not even in the spring it's too warm here and it bolts but in the winter it flourishes and does great so um, in the winter I'm like I need to really try to grow these and I was gonna pick them up pick up some at the Home Depot but there's like five dollars for it and I have this packet of seeds so I was like you know what I'm not going to buy it already started and established I'm going to grow it from seed and I don't know if my seeds are bad but like they are not sprouting so I just took the rest because I've done this twice now put them in soil nothing's happened so I'm just uh, I put the rest of my seeds into a napkin and I'm trying to make them sprout that way and then I'll stick them in soil Maybe there's a special way you have to start cilantro. I don't know, but uh, I'm apparently doing it wrong. I'm taking a little bit of black. I'm just going to take right against the lash line. Ooh, that's a pigmented black. Don't know if I wanted to do that much, but we're doing that now. So I'm just going to bring it up like that. I like what I'm seeing here. Very, very pretty. And that black is pigmented, which is on par with Dee Dee Signature. Her shades, her blacks are very pigmented and smooth. Her mats are just lovely, as I've said many times. I do have a code with the brand if you're at all interested. It's just Lady Katie. Um, I'll leave it down below. I always forget. But if you are interested, I do have an affiliate code. I should clarify. It is affiliated. She was so sweet to reach back out when she was opening up and ask if she could uh, put me on the PR list and if I wanted to open my code again. And I was like, yes, of course. She was literally one of my favorite brands um, when she closed down. So I was really sad to see her close. So happy to see that she's getting back into it um, and able to open it back up. And I'm excited, like I said, I've already said, I'm excited to see what Dee Dee brings in, um, what is this year, 20, so 2024? Is that what next year is, 2024? Oh, wow, oh dear, wow. Okay, anyway, so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and I wanna take the kiwi, which is this black, or black, this green. I'm gonna go grungy green on the bottom just to give something different. Before I do that though, I should probably dust off. I have a touch of fallout, mostly on this side, honestly. And I think doing this has taken care of it, so that's good. But now let's go on with that green and we'll go grungy green on the lower lash line. I have worn this, like I said, at least four times that I remember, I, I lose track, but I'm pretty sure I have at least four pictures that I've taken. Um, you know, to save for whenever I do a palpalooza. But anyway, uh, it's been beautiful. The Her Shimmers, which we're going to get into next, they are gorgeous. If you like the, like, blindingly bright, like, reflective, um, sparkly type of shadows, you'll like these. Now I'm going to go in with this little brush, and I'm going to go into Pears, which is, like, the lighter grunge. Um, so anyway, I have a, you know, a lot going on in the garden. Oh yeah, I do have some um, strawberries. I just got strawberry starts 
today like I ordered them off of Amazon um, to see if I can put them in the ground I'm gonna try growing them between my my blueberry plants now we'll see I've gotten conflicting information on this uh, stuff I read online is like oh yeah they're good to go together because they both love water which is why I thought to put them together because they like a lot of water so I was thinking I'll put them in a row and I could put a soaker hose down and then they love water I'll make sure they both get consistent water but I've also had some conflicting information that they don't like as acidic, acidic soil as blueberries so I think how I'm setting it up they're not gonna be that close to the blueberries so I'm gonna try to just be more selective where I um, put fertilizer to make the soil more to, more acidic for the blueberries. It's an experiment. So maybe I'm doing the wrong thing, but hey, I'm learning. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I just got those starts in the soil. They're actually really established starts. <laughs> They're a lot bigger than I thought. So we'll, uh, I just put those in soil for a day or two and then I'm going to put them in the ground. This is just a little bit of glitter glue, but that's why my hands are so dirty. I think I had 30 um like bare root starts that were sent in the mail that i had to kind of um what do you call it? rehydrate and then put in some soil they're a lot bigger than i thought so i only had really small little because i was thinking like oh it's a little start i'll just put them in these little seed start tra uh, not trays trays and little cups that i've had from other starts that i've bought, purchased and put in the ground but they were many of them were too big for that so i had to improvise a little bit but we got them all in dirt i'll give them a day or two and definitely the smaller ones that are kind of squished in there i'm gonna get in the ground sooner rather than later so i'm putting those in what else am i doing in the garden i feel like there's another um vegetable that i'm growing that i'm totally blanking on but that's the majority of the things i'm growing at least oh yeah i'm bok choy that's another one bok choy and a purple is it collard or purple kale? Some type of beautiful purple. Oh, Swiss chard. That's another one I'm doing. I've never grown before and just have eaten it, uh, cooked with a few times. Bok choy, never grown before, only cooked with a few times, but I really liked it, so I want to grow some to, to eat. And then, yes, I, I need to look up what the purple one is. I want to say it's a purple collard, but I'm not a, a, exactly sure. I bought it from a local market who, uh, a local seller who, uh, who, uh, what do you call, grows stuff good for our area, and it sounded really, you know, yummy, but it just looked beautiful, because they, they, they look like a collard green, but they're purple, like a ruby beautiful, gorgeous purple. I need to Google and re uh, remind myself what it's called, but it's beautiful, and I can't wait for that to grow, and it just be abundant, and look like lush and purple in the garden. That'll be fun. Okay, let's talk about this palette for a minute, or the shimmers for a minute. This one is definitely the chunkiest, but it is also super, like, um, impactful, very, very intense, like, just a little bit of pressure, and you have a lot of shadow on there, and it's very sparkly. It's just a little bit crumbly, so if you use this, I definitely think you have to, like, um, kind of, if you use your finger or whatnot, but whatever you do, press to really get it to stay because otherwise you're going to have a flaky mess um, but that's the I would say the messiest shadow in here these two are nice and firmly pressed but still easy to pick up very smooth to go on I loved them this one is a multi-chrome it's like a mm, what would you call don't even know very smooth it's like a hot pink to gold I think is what it shifts to let's see if we can see in the mirror that's what I do let's see where is the shade it's down here in the, the front corner I don't know if it's going to show. Yeah, I think you can see the gold and the red. I think you can see that there. The shade right here and up there in the mirror. It's really pretty and shifty. I don't know if I'm going to wear that today, though. I feel like that'll... I mean, it'll go with my look, I guess. I will also like squash. I don't think this one... Ooh, that's pretty. Wouldn't that be pretty? That green? Yeah, it's not a, a multi-chrome. I've also um, worn dragon fruit. This is a very intense type of silver. Very beautiful. Both of these have similar formula in that they're a little bit... They're not as firmly pressed as these two, but they're not as loose of a pigment as this one. It's kind of similar to the multi-chrome in these two. They're just very nice and soft, but so impactful. So I want to wear that green. I want to use that green. I think I'll use that green over the majority of the lip, but then what else should I do? I don't really want to do the silver because I've used dragon fruit before. Should I use... I could do the green on the front half and then do figs, which is this red on the other half. That'll be pretty and kind of go with the look, but the green will still give it a pop of something different. Let's do that. What shall we use? I need to clean brushes. My desk is a mess. Literally the same thing I say every time in every one of my videos. I am so sorry. Um, anyway, refocus my camera. Let's dive in and we'll put the green on, right? I said green, yeah. Um, we'll do squash first. This is a really pretty color. Sorry I'm not using the multi -cram. I have used it before. It is beautiful, but I want to use two, two shades today. 
Um, anyway, so that's why I'm growing my garden. So far, everything is growing really well. Uh, I've had to water a lot just because we have got hardly any rain, which is rare for Florida. I feel like it's so it's been such a dry year for Florida. Usually, Florida is just. I always think of Florida summers as hot and wet, especially the springs, they're just hot and wet. But this year it was just hot, <laughs> not very wet. I think there was one month at the start of spring we got a ton of rain, like uh, so much rain. And then the rest of the summer it was just like, yep, see ya, never coming back again. But anyway, um, so the fall has been likewise. I remember reading something on in a group I'm in where like the fall was October usually gets like I don't know, was it six inches of rain in October for our area and for the whole month you know like accumul accumulatively but this year it was like less than two inches of rain for the whole month something like that so it's been a dry month so I've been having to water a lot but besides that everything's growing really well definitely looking forward to the cooler temperatures because I'm getting some bug activity on my little plants and I've been trying to really be really good at taking off any leaves that are starting to uh, get infested with bugs or killing the ones that I'm seeing to hopefully prevent it from spreading to all of the other plants in the in the bed or you know take over too many of the leaves on the plant so I don't lose it altogether. There's a lot of like little white flies and aphids that are wanting to make a home on my plants and I'm like no please because you will totally kill these little baby plants so trying to be diligent to check on them and remove anything that's getting a little too heavy um, one of my swiss charts i don't know if i'll keep because it's down to like two leaves at the center that's like holding on for dear life and it was some type of probably cabbage moth i don't really know but some type of caterpillar i pulled off of it that was munching away on it and i was like no i don't want you to die okay i'm gonna go into figs now and i'm actually just gonna use my finger to pack that place that on the center and just like oh it's not even like a red it's like an orange red it's so so beautiful i don't even know if it does like the camera will do the oh do this justice don't think this isn't no i was about to say is it multi camera it's just the most insane intense smooth type of shimmer and you can totally use a brush to put this on it's not hard at all i just like feel lazy sometimes and like to use my finger when it comes to that middle shade because I'm not really being precise like I am with the crease so I'm just placing it on I feel like I'm kind of off camera sorry I can just be really sloppy and then go back over with the other color with a brush to clean it up but like look at that I almost don't need any more blending it is beautiful figs Oof, I love it we have a few fig trees up there I'm actually thinking about pulling up one that I planted this spring I don't think I put it in a good spot I'm pretty sure I didn't plant it high enough so as it settles it's like sinking low which I'm pretty sure is going to like rot out the branches that are touching the ground so yeah speaking of figs I'm pretty sure I did that one wrong and I'm, I'm going back and forth. I think I found a better spot for it and then it'll also give me an opportunity to um, make it higher because that's something I didn't realize like when they talked about you know when you plant your trees make the hole twice as big as the root ball or the container you're taking it from and then fill it with soil and put it a little bit higher so when I was like okay a little bit higher than the ground I just thought it was a little bit higher but no you need like a, like a mount mounted up almost like this like this is the ground mount that dirt up like this because as everything settles and like the dirt you know kind of settles in as the months go on it comes down a lot so like all right battery change anyway so I, when I originally did it say this line right here is the dirt I did like a mound like oh mound it up a little bit so I did mound it and now that it's sinking it's literally like sinking down into the earth so like when they say mound just like mound it up I don't know if that made any sense but I may uh, definitely made a lot of mistakes when it comes to um to gardening and especially like fruit trees but it's been a really great learning experience at least and i guess that's the way i've always tended to learn best is trial and error i can only like like textbook kind of like read so much when it comes to learning i feel like my best teacher is to actually like hands-on do it and see like oh that's why it says such and such like that makes sense to me now because i actually tried it and it didn't work so now i will never forget why we do such and such so yeah doing is usually my best teacher so that's what we're doing and that's one that's one mistake i have definitely realized that i'm going to need to correct and uh it's a good time to correct it where's my other 
Hmm, we're just gonna use this. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that eggplant. Um, it's a good time in the winter apparently to move trees around because they go pretty dormant, um, kind of down inside. They're not really working on leaves and stuff like that so you can move them around without shocking them too much. Although I will tell you, I had mulberry plants that I got dwarf mulberry plants. I've never had a mulberry, but people here talk about like how good they grow here and how prolific they are. And I'm like, I got kids. If I can have like free fruit on the tree that they can go and grab constantly throughout the year, that's one I want to have. I've never tasted it, but I've heard it's good. And then I said, worst case scenario, we have animals who will eat it. So I got three dwarf mulberry bushes. But uh, I planted them like right next to our house because I have this bare spot next to our house that's just nothing's there. And I was like, it'd be so nice to have this kind, this these um, you know uh, what do you call them? windows kind of shaded by some bushes, and it gets good sun in the morning, no sun the rest of the day, which apparently it kind of likes half and half here in Florida. So I got them, planted them, and. Uh, I was told like, oh, those are going to get really big and uh, they're going to be like ginormous. So they're going to like mess with, they could potentially mess with your house. So then I was like, ah, I don't want it to mess with the foundation of our house. So I was like, okay, got to move them. So then I had to re uproot them, which meant that because it was so long for me to actually get around to planting them and then so long before I was able to move them, um, I had to like cut off some of the roots because the roots are monstrous. When I was digging up, I was like, okay, I make, that makes sense why it would be bad to have near a house because those roots for, I mean, it was, it had got, it had grown a good bit, but the roots were like, the biggest one was like this big around and I just planted them a few months ago. Um, so anyway, sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, so anyway, I had to move them and I thought for sure that I killed it because it was, oh wait, no, I'm going back with the red. I want a little bit more red. Sorry. Um, because it like completely all dried up, but everyone was like, don't worry, mulberries are super hard to kill. Just keep watering it, fertilize it. It'll come back. And it is, I did not kill it, which was super, super exciting to see. So those are coming back. We're going to have mulberry trees. Apparently there are more trees, even the dwarf variety. So we're going to have mulberries come in, uh, hopefully next year. I really hope that I got them in the ground and they'll have enough time to be, to get established for us to be able to enjoy them next summer because they're ever bearing. So I think they're supposed to, um, produce as long as it's like nice and warm, you know, good sun and stuff like that. So they're going to go dormant for the winter. I kind of just want to do dark green actually. And then it uh, should come back next year. And since I got it nice, like got them in a good place that they can grow as much as they want, they hopefully get established over the winter. They should be good to go come spring. So that's the first one I'm hoping that we'll see some fruit from as well as the raspberries and blackberries bushes that I got. So hopefully those also get established over the winter. We got the, what were they? Blackberries established this spring and we saw one little like flower come up, but it was like right after we planted it. So I even told the kid, I was, the kids, I was like, it's probably gonna lose it. Cause once you plant, you know, transplant it, it kind of shocks the plant. Even putting it in a bigger area, still moving it from its environment is a shock. So I was like, well, never, it's probably not, not gonna get to eat it. And I was right, it fell off a couple days later, but it held all year to grow and survive the heat of the crazy summer we had. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that means next year it'll be good, to, it'll be like ready to run. Okay, I'm gonna take a touch, like just a touch of dragon fruit for the inner corner. This is a very intense shadow as you're gonna see, like so intense and beautiful. So I'm gonna try to be careful. It's definitely more of a flaky shadow, um, but I'm gonna try to press it in. It definitely works better. I don't love this shade as an inner corner, but um, as all over, kind of like as a lid color with a flat brush, I feel like it goes on a lot easier, more impactful, or your finger more impactful and uh, stands out better that way. So I like that. But uh, it's still really pretty, like the color is really pretty for the inner corner. It's just a little bit messy. And you guys know me and me and messy shadows usually don't jive. You guys probably tired of hearing me say that. But yeah, this is pretty much the look. Look how beautiful this looks. This looks like such a fun fall color or fall color, fall look. I really want to do wing liner with this look and get some pictures for Instagram. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap out a little bit more of black right here because I feel like there's a little bit of a line. And then I'm going to put liner and I'll put mascara on and I will put pictures over on my Instagram, but that's pretty much going to be it for this video. This is pretty much a look and I'll try to post pictures as soon as I'm able to. I've been really bad at posting pictures over on Instagram, but I'll try. So if you're curious to see how this looks turns out, like with a still, my Instagram is ladykatie92, a still, 
like a picture. I don't know why I call it still. But Lady Katie 92 on Instagram if you want to follow me over there. I'm looking for my lipstick. But if you want to follow me over there and I'll post the picture there whenever I can. But if you're following me over there, you'll uh, you'll know once it's up. Oh, this is a good combination, I feel like. With the purple shirt, the brown lips, the, uh, the, the eye look, it all goes together really well. Oh. I like that peep of uh, the pop of red with that shimmer. Aren't the shimmers beautiful, right? With um, DD signatures, her shimmers are some of my favorite shimmers. Like seriously, I think I'd you know. Granted, like I told you, I didn't love all of the formulas, but honestly, if I had to choose, it'd be this one and this one that are my least favorite. But are they terrible? No. And I like them more than like the Odin's Eye flakies. I know you guys always hear me talk about Odin's Eye. They have these flaky shadows that are kind of patchy. They're thick. They're, I don't like them. I like these way better. Yes, they're still flaky and messy when you apply them, but they smooth out really easy and they look amazing. They're not that patchy type of flaky texture. So I hope I'm not steering you wrong there or, you know, uh, what do you call it? Not, not helping you guys visualize what it is. They're just a little bit like flaky and chunky, but if you use a good amount of pressure, if you use a nice flat brush, if you do your make or your eye makeup before your face makeup, you can apply it really well and then put on your face makeup and you won't have to worry about a mess. They're just a little messy to apply with a full face. But the rest of these, one, two, three, four, absolutely love this formula. It's so pretty. And the beautiful thing about this is that these three, or I should say these three, because I can't remember with her multi crumbs if they cover, if they move at all, but these three with the really solid formulas, they don't move. Like they don't get creasy. They don't move up into my like eyebrows and stuff like that. They, they stay put pretty well with a little bit of uh, primer. So I will continue, you know, to try, test it out for the, um, the multi chrome but these will move a little bit or not move a little bit but they'll like have fallout but those are the only two shadows the rest of these figs apric apricot and squash are beautiful on my lids and i just realized that these are like very gardeny names beets kiwi pears eggplant and then i just talked about my garden today so i didn't even think about that till now but that kind of worked so that is going to do it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it as always i hope this was helpful for you guys if you want my review on this i definitely give it a thumbs up if you like the colors if you have not tried this brand i feel like this is a solid palette to get and to try the pigmentation of the mattes the beautifulness of the shimmers oh, it's a plus plus in my book so hopefully that video was helpful hope you got, hopefully Sorry, I'm running over my words. Let me slow down. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and hopefully you enjoyed hearing about gardening. If there's any other topics you'd like to hear about or more about gardening or anything like that, let me know down below in the description box and I can talk about it in a future video. And with all this said, that is gonna do it for me. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys.